Hey Survivor Geeks, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my Survivor Puzzle app and my merchandise store. The links are below in the description. My name is Jonathan Young and I own a beach rental business in Gulf Shores, Alabama. This is something for 14 years I've been planning on. I've basically trained for this moment. I spearfish almost daily, and I will contribute a lot in the challenges. I wanna win more immunity challenges than anyone ever has. The first impression everybody's getting is going, look at this big guy. I wonder what he can do. But I don't believe that my size is the come all be all. I'm not gonna approach this game as a big guy. That's not my identity. My beach service life is I wanna serve you. That's how I make my money. So with my tribe, what I wanna do is serve. I'm gonna be leader servant. So if we have a stew, and this is me in the game, I'd get a little Southern hospitality, a little strength, a lot of service to my team, and I'd mix it all up, baby. <laughs> I'm Chanel, I am a recruiter and I currently live in New York City. I can talk my way into every kind of situation. So I said, hey, like, let me get my certificate in negotiation mastery from Harvard Business School. And that's exactly what I did. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when negotiating is they end up negotiating with themselves. I was sold at, hi, my name is, but sure, tell me more about you wanting to take me to the end. Tell me more about the folks that you don't like over there. A few years ago, I came up with a list of the most insane crazy things that would either make me money or would make me happy. And at the top of that list is playing Survivor. Playing this game is proving to myself that you can do whatever you want. While society might have said that my list was impractical or not sustainable, I say I'm the exception and I'm not leaving any cash on the table. My name is Jackson. Fox. I grew up in Pasadena, Texas, and I am a hospital transporter. Survivor makes you feel like anything is possible. I think you go in as one person, but you leave a completely different person. I think it makes you a better person. A life experience that has prepared me for this is learning how to be on my own after I came out. I'm a transgendered man, and I think if you can go through the process of pretty much revitalizing your entire life and bearing it all, I think you can go on Survivor and bear it all as well. I want that to be a part of who I am because it made me who I am. I think they're gonna underestimate me at first, but once they get to know me, I'm gonna win people over, slowly but surely. I get along with a tree stump, so I think the Southern charm will win over. And I know it sounds bizarre, I wanna play honorable. I want people to say I treated people with respect, but at the same time, I wanna be able to go through a really big blindside. Hopefully it's not on you, but you wanna see one. My name is Lydia and I'm an actor and a writer, but also a server and a bartender. Survivor has meant a lot to my family. Like my parents have been watching like from the start and of course like they are so scared and just so excited for me. Cause like we always would watch it and be like, oh, I would do great in that challenge. Oh, I would do terrible. In that challenge. And so now like I actually get to put that all to the test. <laughs> One of my main strategies is try to listen more than talk. I hope I am perceived just kind of as like the loving, fun little sister, you know, that like will gather all the knowledge that I possibly can and use that as my advantage in the game. <laughs> because even if it might not look like it, I am thinking at all times. My brain never shuts off. It's never over until it's over and I 100% I will always keep fighting until I die basically. <laughs> I'll take whatever Jeff throws at me. <laughs> My name is Hai, and I am a data scientist. So I like to say that I can read the room better than I can read a book, and I think that's going to take me far in the game. Growing up, I was a latchkey kid, meaning that I would let myself into the house after school every day. And as a result, I was raised pretty much in front of a television, and Survivor was at the forefront of my childhood. Yule was an idol to me growing up, because Yule showed that Asian men can be confident, successful, and sexy, and watching that as like a 12 year old was empowering. So life prepared me for Survivor. Having the world come at you, given all of these traits that make me undesirable, gay, poor, Asian, what have you. When you get up every day, even though the world tells you you shouldn't, it makes you resilient. So I'm looking forward to this. It's been 20 years of the making. I'm so 
Sloughing, I'm 19, I'm from Palo Alto, California, and I'm a Harvard student, and I'm in the Army National Guard. My family is from India, so for me growing up, it was a lot of focus on education. So a lot of people were surprised when like the person who like was on all the science and math clubs joined the Army National Guard, but for me it was really reflective of the values my family raised me with. And I feel like the basic combat training really did prepare me because my body still remembers like what <laughs> starving and freezing from field exercises feels like. But I was so beyond excited to be here. I don't think my brain fully understands what's happening. My strategy going into the game is sort of undefined, mostly because this is season 42. I know something crazy is going to happen, but for me, it makes sense to play it safe for the first few votes until I get a foothold. And then that's when I go crazy. My name is Roxroy Bailey. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm a stay-at-home dad. Being a father is the toughest job in the world, but one of the things you learn right away is that you don't really matter anymore and that you must have patience. And patience is a virtue in this game. I hope to contribute by winning challenges, but also comfort. In terms of like having to fire, getting food and stuff like that, that sticks in people's minds. It's like, wait, well, hold on. I don't know if I really want to vote Rox off if he's catching two fish a day, I'm eating. I mean, this is a one in 18 shot of winning a million dollars. And as a black Jamaican American, okay, no one has given me those odds for such a life-changing event in my life. A lot of investment in just this little guy that I grew up in Brooklyn. So I want Jeff to look at me and say, here, Rox, here's a million dollars. And I'll promptly go and walk over and give it to my wife. <laughs> My name is Lindsay Delasowicz. I'm a registered dietitian and I'm from Asbury Park, New Jersey. This game has been on my mind forever. I always knew I was gonna play. I've been doing competitive things my whole life. From nine to 15, I played tackle football. Probably not many girls are gonna say that. I'm a tough chick and no one's gonna really push me around or try to tell me what to do. Like if I wanna do something, I'm gonna do it. Having that edge and being competitive, I feel like is gonna be super helpful. Stephanie LaGrosa from early, early seasons, she was the last person on her tribe and I really do relate to that. So I definitely feel a lot like her. Quitting's just not an option, but I think the hardest part for me is trying to get out of my head and just enjoying things because when you get stressed out, like you're not thinking clearly, you're not being strategic enough. And if I can just like be me, I think I'm gonna do really well. So I just gotta like chill out. My name is Zach, I'm a student, and I'm from South Florida. Survivor is genuinely one of the most important things in my life. And speech and debate has prepared me so much for Survivor, which was one of my biggest things in high school, because it's not necessarily about the fact or the argument itself, as it is forming your argument for your judge or for your audience. Knowing the numbers, knowing when to split votes, that stuff just comes super naturally. But I think that the hardest part is probably the physical, because I know that I'm skinny, so I'm just gonna have to prove myself where I can, which is balance, puzzles, and every single second, I'm gonna be waiting to see where is my move. I don't think anyone's gonna be looking at me as like, oh, now that's the guy we gotta worry about. And I think they might be wrong, so I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to, to like sneak right through. Jenny, I'm a designer. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, born and raised by parents who immigrated from South Korea. I like to say that my mom was the original tiger mom. <laughs> really tough on me, you know, bring home a 99 on a test. What happened to the other two points? I'm like, mom, it's still an A plus. Doesn't matter. It needs to be perfect. I was really pushed to do the best, to be the best. So I think the most challenging part for me in this game will be that I'm not going to be the best at everything, but that's why I'm here, is to be comfortably uncomfortable. And my strategy is to pull back a little bit and, and see what and when the right time is to strike. I love when you surprise Jeff and he goes, wow! <laughs> I, I want to get a wow reaction out of him.
name is Omar Zahir and I'm an exotic animal veterinarian. A veterinarian, they never know what to expect because you're always working with different types of animals, especially within the exotic field because you could come in one day and see a tiny 18 gram canary with a broken leg that you have to like use your micro tools or the next day you could have your arm shoved up a rhino's butt. It's all about not panicking, staying calm. You never know what to expect and that's just like Survivor. I'm gonna treat these people like, oh, you're a guinea pig, you're a rabbit, you're a bird, you're a snake and try to suss out who they are. I'll be moldable because you have to meet the pressures around you, otherwise you'll go extinct. But I always have my eye on the prize. I want them to see me as someone kind of stupid, you know, a very simple animal, like maybe like a pigeon that doesn't really know what's going on. It's just there to have fun. But really I want to be like a predatory bird that'll strike them when they least suspect. and right now I'm a student and also a retail worker in Ajax, Ontario, Canada. I think my strongest asset in the game is gonna be my social skills. Making those bonds I feel would be like a very easy thing. On the other hand, I think that the hardest thing for me to do will be to break those bonds. So like what will happen is my head's like, hey Marianne, like watch out, like you know this is wrong, but my heart's like, no, I have to see the best in the person, I have to do this. And when I told my mom I was interested in Survivor, she was so confused. We're all first generation immigrants and I just remember my mom being like, Marianne, why are you trying to go to Survivor? If you want to be a Survivor, let me take you to my village. I'll show you how to make fire, I'll show you how to cook. So she didn't really get it at first, but so many people want to play this game and I'm one of the lucky few who have the opportunity to do it. I'm just honestly just super excited and thankful and like I gotta make it to the end, like I'm so excited. I'm Romeo Escobar, 37, from Norwalk, California. I've been playing Survivor my entire life because I was born in Central America, where sometimes we didn't have water, we didn't have electricity, and then when I moved to the States, it wasn't all that much better growing up in South Central LA with gang violence, but I looked at it as an opportunity to grow. So I don't think the game of Survivor has ever seen anybody like me. I'm representing the Latino community, the immigrant community, the LGBT community, so I feel a huge huge weight on my shoulders, but I never fail in anything that I do. I'm a pageant coach and my job is to prepare women for the Olympics of Beauty Pageants Miss Universe. And what that entails is just taking this woman and molding her to be the best that she can be. And I'm going to take that same advice that I give to my students and bring it to the game of Survivor. My name is Tori Meehan from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I'm out here living my dream come true, but it's also my family's dream. Every single Christmas, we have this tradition where we binge watch an entire season of Survivor that same day. Of course, Jesus is first, but Survivor and Jeff are close seconds. But I think the biggest obstacle I have is people's perception of me because when people first meet me, I always hear they're like, I thought you were gonna be like a mean girl or stuck up, but then I got to know you and you're actually super weird, which is true. Like I love Harry Potter. I played Muggle Quidditch. I was in marching band. I wrote a science fiction novella. And what do you know? I literally am trained in trust. So as a therapist, I've spent six plus years in school being trained with how to get someone to trust me. So I wanna be people's therapist on the island. I did not come here to be this nice, pretty girl who is boring and does nothing. Like I came to strategize, came to play, cut throats, crush dreams, win that, okay? I'm Daniel Strunk, and I'm technically a lawyer, but I work right now as a law clerk for a federal judge in Michigan. I had an amazing high school government teacher who got me into the law, and there's at least some preparation for Survivor from that. If they have that challenge where you have to keep your hand up, I'll win that one because my default position in Yale Law School was this. My hand was always up. I grew up watching Survivor, but I really don't know if I have what it takes to be the sole Survivor. Look, Las Vegas should not be betting on me. I'm short, a little bit chunky. I don't know if I'll be able to do well in challenges. I don't know if I'll be able to provide around camp. I'm gonna try. I'm obviously a sneaky person. I'm well-educated. I'll try to be goofy, but I mean, it's unbelievable to be here at Fiji. I've wanted to be on the show for so long. It's like this itch, and I want there to be no Survivor itch anymore. I don't know if I'll succeed, but that's the goal. I am Drea Wheeler. I am a fitness trainer slash fitness business owner and grew up in San Antonio, 
but I live in Montreal now. I feel like my life has been like a survivor boot camp. Growing up in San Antonio, we basically lived organized sports. My middle school was sponsored by Nike. Like that's how intense we were, you know what I mean? So I am athletic and I think that my experience in the fitness game has prepared me for this. Not just being an athlete, but also as an owner of the fitness business because I had to learn how to strategically be one step ahead of my competitors. It feels surreal that I'm here and my toes are in the sand. It's weird, like it's bizarre, but as a super fan, I want that like song as I find the idol and I put it on and then I take it away. That's what I want as a super fan. Hi, my name is Mike Turner. I'm a retired firefighter, and I was born and raised in Hoboken, New Jersey. I got hired in January of 1985. I was a young buck coming on the job, rose to the rank of lieutenant, then captain, and then finally battalion chief. My career as a firefighter has totally prepared me for a game like Survivor because everybody says they'd run into a burning building and pull a person out. But you don't know what you're gonna do until you're in that moment. So hopefully I'm prepared to adapt to different situations. I think the most difficult part is probably gonna be me talking in a way where nobody hears me because I talk loud, call it the whole book and whisper. So hopefully nobody hears they're getting blindsided. Otherwise you can see Mike Turner's name written on that parchment a few times. But I will be the hardest worker out there. I don't quit. Let's face it, I have that fierce, angry look. It's totally opposite of what I am. So my job is to diffuse that look right away. Hopefully people accept me for who I am, not what I look like. No book is ever exactly like the cover. Mariah Sharon, and I'm a homeschool mom right now, but I'm a teacher. To actually be here, it's so surreal because when Survivor first started, I was newly a mother. And then six, seven years later, he's into it. Now it's our thing. We sit down and watch it. And so based on first impressions, I think my tribe will see me teacherly and motherly, which I am all of those things, but I don't have time for that. I expect everyone to be loyal to themselves, which is what I'm going to do somewhere in life and motherhood and wife. Like I've lost a passion or a fire or motivation or something. And I don't, I don't know exactly what that thing is, but there's a piece of Mariah out here somewhere that I need back, renewed and restored and ready to apply to the rest of, of life. So I'm looking for me and I'm gonna find her. I'm ready.